today? <laughs> After lunch, uh, a bit lumba, right? <laughs> so uh, I'll keep it light. Uh, I know there are a lot of bosses here today, and there are also a lot of hoteliers and uh, maybe hotel owners or operators as well as uh, venue. So uh, <clears throat> I'll run through. I might take about 10 minutes, and then we can talk about uh, discussion about Q&A and so on, okay? So I'd like to keep it real practical for you. Um, <clears throat> so let's run. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I thought to keep it practical, we want to talk about sustainable events. I wanted to share on three levels first. So the first one, let's talk about what is sustainability? Just a bit of the building blocks, right? So we are on the same page, number one. Number two, uh, Lillian did a brilliant job. Thank you, Lillian, on the <laughs> ISO certification process, the pathway you can take. And then number three, uh, this is an exciting one I'll share with you, uh, that 100% that of the power that we are using here today in the venue is clean. Yeah, so let's start with the building blocks, okay? I'll just give you three, three blocks. Number one, these colorful icons that you see, you'll be very familiar with it by now, but a lot of the um, frameworks and the rating uh, criteria that you see uh, makes a reference to this, okay? So just a little bit of history, seven years ago, 21, uh, 2015 in Paris, uh, something happened, never happened before, 193 countries can agree on something. So they agree on this way forward to um, meet 17 of the global challenges, the hardest challenges that our world face today. So these are the 17 that you see. So, and each of these 17 goals has got its own targets, so it's quantitative. So you can imagine it is actually at the national level where we talk about no poverty, um, no hunger, and so on. But for our country to really achieve this as a nation, it needs to be cascaded down to um, the business sector. That's where we are, right? Where you are today, as well as the uh, civil society and everyone else. So that's why you find that these are very interlinked to what we do today. Okay, so the second one is this hierarchy. Is this new or maybe everyone has seen this before? Can I have a show of hands maybe? Is this new? Yeah, so yeah, so this waste management hierarchy is a very fundamental mindset about how we can look at things. Uh, we, I think you are very familiar with 3R, yeah? So at the first level, if we can avoid, we will avoid. So that will basically, um, we talk about reduce, right? We don't need it. If we don't need it, then don't do it, okay? Um, and that, that works for all the bosses, we'll be happy to hear. If we don't do it, we save money. Okay, I heard Didi talk about ROI, so that's where we are as well. And when we go down another level, if we really have to use it, then we, can we reuse it or not? Okay, can we use more than one time? And then it goes on to recycle and whatever we can get out of it, recover. And we use already, we really cannot do anything with it anymore than we have to dispose, okay? So whatever that we do, this waste management hierarchy is very fundamental in decisions that we take every day, okay? So number two is the waste management hierarchy. Number three <coughs> is basically carbon, right? Greenhouse gases emission is equivalent to carbon. So in the world today, we, you, might, you might hear that um, we have too much stock of carbon in our atmosphere. 
So all our efforts is really to reduce it. Okay. Um, now, there are just three parts that we all have to understand when we talk about carbon. Because when we run our business, there are some which comes under what we call a scope one. It's consider elements that is within our control, high level of control. Okay, it's a result of our actions, our decisions. Okay, scope two. Scope two is basically the energy that we use. The biggest energy we use will be electricity. Other than that will be steam, gas, and so on. But in our ecosystem, for all of us here today, I believe it will be electricity. Okay, so this is not directly under our control because whatever TNB gives us, that's what we will have to use. So that's why it's in the middle. So that is scope two, okay? Scope three is something that we have influence over but not necessarily have control. So that includes our suppliers, our supply chain. So that is the scope three. Okay, I hope I have left something useful for you. When we talk about sustainability, there are three. One is sustainable development. Number two, waste management hierarchy. And number three, a little bit about emission and the scope one, two, three. So now, let's go on to talk about uh, <coughs> ISO certification to get ourselves ready to be certified. So Lillian comes from a certification body. It is a body that audits. Basically, they are the auditor for ISO, so it's 21 to 1 in this case. As a company, um, we need to get ourselves ready. Yeah? So, now, ISO 21 to 1, who is it applicable for? It's for anyone in the event and event-related activity. Okay? So, uh, you might see it can be organizers, event organizers, event owners, service provider. There's a lot of service provider. Maybe you're the AV team or the caterer. And <coughs> the others um, in, the, in, the U, in the advanced countries, uh, even sports clubs go for it. Any Liverpool friends? Liverpool? Liverpool is ISO 21 to 1 certified. Or Man U? Maybe not. <laughs> Man U is also certified 21 to 1. <laughs> yeah. Tottenham Hotspurs? No? Zero? They, they are as well. So, in the sporting industry, it is heading that direction. I'm not sure why the football people are very uh, sustainable. Yeah? Um, Olympics, um, ever since the... Um, <clears throat> UK Olympics that started it. Um, even the COPS, the COP28 now, is uh, being certified on the BSI as well. Yeah? So, big and small, it doesn't matter. It applies as well for all shapes and sizes. So, just one note I want to uh, share with you that it is a management system we are talking about. It is not just one event. That means if my company does 10 events in a year, um, we need to have a management system that consistently practices whatever that we document. Okay? So, unless there is a sporting event which my company only does one in four years or one a year, then practically it is event equals my company. Yeah? Okay. So, we move on. I wanted to link it for you in terms of impacts. Um, <clears throat> now, when we talk about sustainable development, and Lillian talks about we need to meet the needs and expectations of interested parties, what does it mean, right? So, you will find that there is a need to look at elements which has an impact on the environment, number one, or impact on social factors, which includes community as well, uh, impact on governance, 
leadership policies. So you'll find that this conveniently falls into the E, S and G. But for us in the industry sector or the business sector, business event sector, there's so much more as well. Because there is also the legacy factor, right? You want to leave a legacy. You do an event and people remember it for years. And there's also culture that is there. For example, Penang is very proud of his own culture. That's why I see the Becha here. Um, and Juhu Cha was over lunch. So those are the culture, the food and the heritage that is also very important when we decide to choose this as a destination. So it's a lot more than just the E and the S and the G as well. Yeah? Having said that, when it comes to ISO 20121, um, Lilian really showed you how it is the same in terms of the structure, in terms of the framework of the ISO itself. I want to tell you where they differ. Okay, where they differ is like this. For example, you are very familiar with ISO 9001. So the main aim of ISO 9001, for example, is customer satisfaction. How to be better so that we can improve customer satisfaction, right? For ISO 14000, it focus on, focuses on environmental performance. And there are many more ISO, but when it comes to 2121, our interested parties, the needs and expectation of interested parties is many. It's really many and varied, right? So our, we need to meet a lot of people's needs. The whole chain is very long one, right? So in terms of, secondly, it's really the legislation and the compliances, how to be safe, how to be... Um, meeting the local regulations for the environmental as well. So this is the part that relates to event sustainability. So I just wanted to make a point that ISO 2121 is so much more and wider in scope as compared to 9001 and 14001. But definitely they are integral to each other, you'll see why. Okay, so when we say the chain is long, I think this is very familiar to you, what you see um, in terms of how one person ends up in this room, like Didi say, we went through uh, many, many processes and steps, right? So it involves a lot of people. I think Francis mentioned that when we want to move towards the area of sustainability, when we want to move forward, we need to move as one because everybody in the ecosystem will have to move together when we talk about event sustainability. Yeah? So whenever that we are doing an event, uh, one question is very important. We have to decide what is the most important issues or matters for the event? Okay, for example, if we are running a medical event, it will look very different from running a sporting event, for example, or a business conference like ours today. So we have to understand as well as talk to the stakeholders what is important, what do they need, what do they expect. And then, as a business, we deliver that for them. Yeah? So, on this um, chart that you see, the yellow ones, I think it's, it's not very... It's very familiar to you. It's, it's nothing new to you. On the supply chain, our communication with our supply chain, how to do better, maybe this is a little bit newer. And we are going into a realm where we are talking about our measurement goals. We 
have to measure before we can improve. So this is where we talk about emission. Early on, I talked about scope 1, 2, 3. So that's where we talk about emission. And another big portion is definitely the waste. And followed by uh, DEI. That's a little bit on the social side. Leland mentioned about Singapore and Singapore has made it their aim to be the number one MICE destination in APEC by 2030. And they have put a uh, target, I'll say, by 2025, they will come up with their own standards how to measure emission and waste, number one. Number two, they have targeted that 80% of SASIOS member will be certified. And the standard they have chose includes ISO 21021. So if you're doing any business or planning to do any business expanding into Singapore, this can be something that may be of interest to you. So out of the many in the chain, I thought I'll just select one um, element, then we can explore together, just have an idea. When we say sustainability in that element, what does it mean? Okay, so you can imagine the checklist that we have. So many, many of the elements have their own checklist, but in venue, this is typically what we would be looking at. So uh, when we decide which venue we want to go to, Certification is on top of the list. So, for example, if it is a venue that is well certified, your GBI certified, your LEED certified, then it just means that I don't need to worry what you do with your um, water, what you do with other things. I know that you have a policy on sustainability. Okay? So, that's definitely... Uh, top on the list. Um, the other elements are like air quality. I remember walking <coughs> to this room, uh, coming up the escalator, there's a big signboard that says, do not worry. Um, our conference uh, venue here is, uh, uh, the air is clean. It basically says it's got nano X and so on. So this is very important so that we can just be here with a peace of mind, right? So air quality is an important factor. Water as well. And I'll move on. Energy is, a, is, is obviously a major thing. And energy has got its own long list as well. If we put energy as important to us, when we find a venue, we will have questions that we want to put forward. Yeah? So some of those... Um, energy questions are there. And there are so many more elements, waste management, travel and transport, uh, sets, furniture, staging, AV, decor. How to make them sustainable? That is a major question. And I, I was very impressed. This is my first time here to SPICE. I was very impressed. Uh, I'm still very impressed. And I thought, I'll just go to the website and pull up something and share with everyone. Um, what I was impressed about was really, uh, this is a green building. Green building meaning it is a GBI certified building. And uh, there is a partially clean energy powering the center. That's great. It's not easy to have a fully solar powered because we just have that many rooftop, for example, right? Not enough. Yeah. And... Uh, there are a lot of practices which I thought was quite interesting. It's in the website, um, but I'll just share it here so uh, you can just have a quick look. Um, on the urban farming, it talks about, uh, this is the food and beverage bit where they plant and then some of it is used back in the kitchen. Uh, coffee ground, you know, we make coffee. We have a lot of the waste from there. Um, they make something out of it, so less waste goes out. Uh, EV charging station, so keeps our air clean. 
uh, upcycle merchandise, you know, there are lots of exhibition stuff and things like that. It's being recycled or upcycled. So it doesn't go to the landfill, for example, because um, currently Malaysia, we, most of our waste uh, end up in the landfill. These are government-owned landfills. That's our major um, treatment method, okay? Um, hand dryer instead of tissues. Food compost so that organics don't have to go to the landfill. Uh, rainwater harvesting and it's being reused. Food compost and so on. So there are a lot of nice practices uh, separately. I wanted to show this, but then this curve display is already there. Why is this so great? It's because this is LED powered. So instead of having displays um, which we have to throw away, so this is one that helps us to save electricity because it's solar powered, but also save waste going to landfill. Yeah? And a little bit more. And this is the last one that our event at this venue is 100% powered by renewable energy. Um, my company, our consultant firm, is doing the um, calculation, the quantification of the emission on behalf of uh, the organizers here. And whatever that we have calculated as a CO2 emission will be offset with renewable energy certificates sponsored by Saxon Renewables. So this is the last slide. Thank you.